Chapter 10. Word of Mouth. 23rd of February 2019. 1.15pm. Another room booked, thanks to the internet. How did we manage before Google? The crown and mitre in the middle of the historic border city of Carlisle. A hotel with history. Previous guests and visitors include the former United States President, Woodrow Wilson, whose mother hailed from the city, and the Beatles. It wasn't the hotel's status that attracted me, though, more the price. An absolute bargain at £53 for a double room. Again, I'm not expecting to find anything in Carlisle to help with the search for Ernie, but it'll be another nice little jaunt before I head home and prepare for the bigger journey that lies ahead of me. Thoroughness has always been my byword. Another bout of sentimentality hit me on the way back to the hotel. I bought a bunch of flowers. I will take them to the memorial garden on my way out of town. It felt like it was the right thing to do. I will then head north to Newcastle before turning west over towards Carlisle. With a bar meal somewhere around halfway, I will try and time my arrival to just after the worst of the rush hour traffic. I quite fancy a lazy night tonight. A couple of pints in a city centre pub before heading back to the hotel room for nibbles and a bit of TV. I'll find out what I can tomorrow and set off back to Lancashire mid-afternoon. 3.45pm I found a nice little pub in a place called Corbridge, just off the A69, the Black Bull. It's a lovely part of the world, this. So tranquil and calm. I could retire here. Lovely pub too. This could be my local. Only myself and two other customers in, so I shouldn't have to wait long to be served. I went for the steak, that was my meal of choice, to be washed down by a large glass of orange juice. I'll save the alcohol for tonight. I'm not really sure why I'm, why I'm going to Carlisle. Ernie did not live or work there as far as I can tell, and the only connection to the city was his teenage friendship with Martha Nugent and I'm not being paid to trace her. But can I justify putting the trip on expenses? Well, let's see what it reveals, if anything, before I decide that. The enormity of my visit to America is beginning to dawn on me. The place is vast. How, in such a short space of time, can I find out anything about a man who arrived on their shores over 70 years ago, and with a false ID at that? I have decided to allow myself 10 days. Flights are booked, but the return is flexible and can be amended for a small fee, if £125 is considered small. Fees are sorted, though. I fly at 2.30pm from Manchester and arrive 9.30am local time. I should get checked into the hotel by lunchtime and I have allowed myself two days to acclimatise and get used to my surroundings as well as enjoy a bit of the city with the New York sightseeing pass that I've bought. That can come out my wages. Who knows when I'll get to visit this place again, so I may as well combine work with an unexpected holiday. From what I've read so far, a trip to Ellis Island seems to be the best starting point. I shall email the museum in the morning with my request for information and help. From what I can gather, diligent records are kept and access to these are available to the public. Ships arriving from Europe would have been quite regular, but from what I already know already, I should be able to narrow the search down considerably. Note to self. Confirm hotel reservation for the first three nights. Pay on arrival. Ah, food has arrived. That looks amazing, Mr Diary. I will update you when we get Carlisle and check into the hotel. This I am going to enjoy. 6pm. Arrived and checked in, no problem at all. I'm doing well with these hotels. I hope the Lexington in New York proves to be just as agreeable as this. It certainly looks like it on the photographs on their website. I have a glorious view here over the Market Square and the Old Town Hall. The shops have just closed and the city is settling itself down for the evening. I will have to come back to visit in the summer when it's a bit warmer. At least it is a clear night with no rain. I hate the rain. I'm still stuffed from that steak, but it was worth it. That's the best £15.99 I've spent in a long time. 
I don't think I'll manage more than a snack this evening. Crisps and nuts in a local pub sounds good enough for me. I've been thinking about Martha Nugent and her tenuous links to my Ernie on the drive over. What am I expecting to find in Carlisle? I can't go chasing every little lead. I need to tighten up my search. I certainly can't behave like this in the States. I will need to be selective about where I go and make good judgment calls. My window of opportunity is limited and I need to be focused if we are to find anything about a man after 1948. Right, quick freshen up and then I'll go and find a nice hostelry to relax in. With only a name to go on, I really don't know how much I can accomplish in just a few hours. Maybe a trip to births, deaths and marriages tomorrow will reveal something. But I have so little to go on, it could take me all day. There's still no guarantee she even came back to Carlisle or stayed here. Still, I'm here now. I may as well enjoy the evening and start to put a more detailed plan together for my trip to the States. I shall update again this evening, or in the morning, depending on the condition I'm in. 12.38 a.m. Mr. Diary, this mission to find Mr. Ernie Grimshaw is just bloody surreal. That was one of the strangest and most fun evenings I've had in my entire life. I admit I'm a little tipsy right now, but I need to get my thoughts down on paper before I go to sleep. I regret not taking the dictaphone with me, so these notes are my recollections of tonight's conversations and cannot be 100% accurate. But if I don't write them down now, I think I'll have had, I will think I've had the weirdest of dreams come the morning. The location, the King's Head pub, less than 100 metres from my hotel reception. On arrival, the place was fairly busy. An ancient tavern, recently refurbished, but retaining its character and characters, inside and out. I bought myself a pint of bitter and sat in the top right-hand corner beside a gentle old couple. It was lovely to see them holding hands. Romance and love were still there, even at their age. Now, I'm not one to strike up a conversation with strangers, and I sat there keeping myself to myself for the first few sips. They were not so backward in coming forward, though. The man introduced himself as Frank, and then told me his wife's name was Nancy. I told them mine, and that was it. Friends for life. Before I knew it, I was sat at their table discussing our life stories and buying drinks for each other. Frank and Nancy had lived in Carlisle all their lives, and had no desire to live anywhere else. He had a razor-sharp observational wit, and she complimented him brilliantly. For a time, I forgot why I was there. It was such great company. I do not think I've had a laugh as much as that for years. We talked about everything and nothing. School, football, traffic wardens, drugs, farming, shoes, gardens and dogs. We talked and laughed and talked some more. About four pints in, Nancy asked about me. Nobody has asked about me before. I didn't really know where to start. I just opened up and blurted out my life story. Loves, or lack of them. Family, jobs. They were the kind of couple that you felt you could trust with your innermost thoughts. And so I found myself talking, somewhat unguardedly. They listened and smiled, genuinely interested in what I had to say. They were fascinated about my current job. They had me down as a modern-day version of Inspector Clouseau, mixed with James Bond. They made me feel so special. They actually made me feel wanted. They even called me Morse for the rest of the evening. But the best was yet to come. They eventually asked me how I had come to find myself in Carlisle. I told them everything, apart from names of sources. I wasn't that drunk. From my first trip to my... For my first letter to my trip to see him, then to Carlisle. The two of them hung on every word, and not just them either. Others had tuned into our conversation and my story. They were fascinated. The more I talked, the more people gathered around to listen. When I, fi when I finished, I was buzzing. I ended by telling them about my weak reason to for coming to Carlisle. I felt a little embarrassed about it, but certainly not uncomfortable. These people were genuinely interested. 
engrossed even. I'd never been the centre of attention like this before and it felt amazing. Thanks, Ernie. This is what they said, to the best of my memory. Well, bugger me, said Frank when I'd finished, and they all burst out laughing. I blushed. So you see, I told them, this is another leg of my wild goose chase. I've had a bloody good evening so far, but I'm not expecting to uncover much here. Don't be too sure, said Frank. This is a small city. Every bugger knows every other bugger's business, and if they don't, they will know some bugger who does. He got up and strolled to the top of the step that led to the bar. Albert, he shouted, do you know a Martha Nugent? Who? came the reply. Nugent, Martha Nugent. Ever heard the name? Frank asked him. I know a few Nugents round here. A few rogues among them too, came the reply. Don't know a Martha, though. Do you, Keith? Aye, I know a few, came another voice. Most live up Raffles Estate way. Or they did. Don't know a Martha, though. There can't be many Marthas about these days. I knew a Martha. She wasn't a Nugent, though. Used to drink down the road in the working men's club on Fisher Street. It's shut now. She wasn't a Nugent, though. Lewis, that's it. Martha Lewis. There were a good crowd in there. Shame that place shut. Shame a lot of them are shut in now. Martha Lewis, said another. I remember Martha Lewis. Small woman, thin. Passed away not too long ago. Lovely woman. Yeah, she lived Raffles Way, I'm sure. Just off Orton Road. I'd often see her at the bus stop there. Gosh, a strong gust of wind would have knocked her over. My cousin Bill used to clean her windows for her. I'll give him a call. Hold on. Another one jumped in. She used to go to my church. St. Bede's on Wickton Road. Great lady. She'd do anything for you. Died a couple of years back. I went to a funeral at the crematorium. Popular lady. Huge turnout there. If I remember rightly, her husband was called Tommy. He wasn't a churchgoer, though, and he passed away a few years before her. I think she lived with her sister for a while. Ah, I remember Martha now, said another. She lived with her sister. They looked so alike, almost like twins. You would always see them out and about together. Her sister was Sally. That's it, Sally. I can't remember the husband. I can, vaguely, said the mother. They had a big dog. Daft as a brush it was. Lovely fella was Tommy Lewis. I'm on the phone to Bill, shouted the man with the window cleaner for her brother. He remembers her very well. He cleaned her windows. Didn't charge a penny for them. I will show you where she lives if you like. He said she was a scream. He said she. he took his wages in laughs. What's the priest's name at St. Bede's? Frank asked the lady. Father Hayes. He's been there a long time now. He would have known Martha well, I'd guess. If you're going to speak to anyone, he might be a good starting point, son. It's amazing who you remember when you get chatting here, Albert said. Frank turned to me and said something like, There you go, Sherlock. Let us be your Dr. Watson. I told you everyone knew everyone else round here. Not a wasted journey after all. Martha Lewis, formerly Nugent, lived on the Raffles estate. I'm sure these fellows will point you in the right direction if you want the exact address. Died a couple of years back. Buried in the city. Cemetery beside the crematorium. Lovely lady. Popular. Dog lover. Church goer. You didn't expect to find that when you walked in here, did you? He laughed. And here I am. Back in the room with places to go tomorrow. People to see and leads to follow. And just for the record, Mr Diary, that one of the best nights of my life. Whatever I find or don't find tomorrow, it was worth coming for just for that. Thank you, Martha. Good night and God bless.